are listening to The Big Cake. Is your button buttoned, monsieur? I don't see my dick, so it must be. Ah, uh, yes, that's the class we've come to know and expect from the Reverend Mad Duck. Uh, Hello, children. It's episode 60 of Bless you, fuckers! Comics Podcasting on the Edge of Civility. <sighs> I think we're still on the edge. I think we've had this conversation before, but, you know, every time you say that, I wonder about where we Do you want to back off? Edge. I think we were kicked off some time ago. Well, we haven't been kicked off of, you know, Comics Podcast Network. We haven't been kicked off of iTunes. We can't be that bad. There is that. Now, um, have we had any further messages from our screaming Skype friend? <laughs> no, we have not had a message back from the unknown garbledy gook of a fan. Of I prefer ours. to think of him as Skype rapist. What? What? I think that he violated Skype somehow with that message. I, I'm sure it wasn't intentional. You know, he just accidentally fell and started humping away trying to get off. Uh, but that was absolutely horrifying. A Skypist? <laughs> oh, you. Uh, which reminds me, um, Wednesday. Is... What the fuck did that remind you of? <laughs> Wednesday is a call-in episode. If you want to take some time and call in to two hundred three. 488 uh, Wrong 203 433 Guys if you'd like to call into the wrong five number nine, 5910 Or you can verify it on the website It's all the same so, uh, Cabo's going to call in We're going to talk some Walking Dead We're going to talk a couple other things Let's See what we can uh, What miscreantism we can cook up So we both caught a flick this week. Separately. That, separately. That we... But equally. Yes, equally. Separate, but equal. You weirdo. You lamer. What are you, from 1954? In many ways. <laughs> <laughs> I just bought a Rat Pack box set of DVDs. Not even of music. Which was the 60s. <laughs> the Rat Pack really was the 50s. The movies were the 60s, <laughs> yes. But. At any rate, Predators, plural. With an S. Direct sequel to Predator. Which is a smart, cagey move. Yes, yes. Like, really, Predator 2, Alien vs. Predator, Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Those Shite. didn't happen. <laughs> I'm quite glad. Because they're treating Predators the same way that Aliens vs. Predator treated both the franchises. Ignore everything that's happened before. Watch our flick. Well, you know what? It's a lot easier to do that in the Predator than in the Alien series for the simple reason that Alien has had consistent characters and consistent actors. Yes. You know, you can't really just say, oh, this never happened. Like, that was one of the big issues with Superman is here you're making a sequel to the first Superman film. Correct. But, you know, like, Christopher Reeve was Superman... And then he was still Superman, and then he was still <laughs> Superman. So it threw you off. It's like, well, I'm only going to follow the things I like. Well, you know, they didn't, from my understanding, uh, they just didn't talk about three and four. Three and four. But three and four happened in oh, Superman. Because he went off, he, he thought he heard the rumor that there might be a chunk of Krypton left. So he decided to go investigate, and that's why he was gone for five years. Right. But that's an aside. Predators. Predators. Plural. Opens up with people falling out of the damn sky unconscious, and they're just hoping that they'll wake up soon enough to pop their chute. Which is a very logical point. It is? Yeah, think of it this way. The Predators have hit on a method to determine... They're foes in advance. Like, they're picking the deadliest people alive. Right. And then, if they can't figure out how to wake up and operate a parachute, they're not really going to figure out how to take out a fucking invisible alien that fires lasers, has hawk cameras, and monster dogs. 
You know, I could have done without the monster dogs. I think it's a logical progression. I mean, they're hunters, you know? Well, no, I can see that they have companion beasts. That I get. What didn't ring for me was how many rounds they had to pump into the goddamn things before they died. That was a tad ridiculous. I mean, they're not getting replenished. I mean, the predator uh, took less rounds to kill than the dog. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But the dogs also managed to take out no one. I mean, maybe they're just really tough and not that fucking deadly. I I mean, they were gnawing on people and doing nothing. Kind of like, you know, (laughs) maybe like the world's toughest poodles. Oh. No, not with spikes. (laughs) I'm just saying, you know. Spikes and horns and plates of bone armor. That No, that's not. <clears throat> but the thing being, they weren't getting replenished. This is this is I'm still on this scene because it irritated me a little bit. They're pumping hundreds of rounds into this goddamn thing. The the Russian guy has only that one backpack full of ammo. Right. We know from the previous movie that that backpack only has two hundred rounds in it. You know, he said it right in it, capped off the full full pack. 200 rounds from the minigun. Nothing. Not a damn thing. <laughs> well, I, I don't believe that they were uh, entirely logical. But <laughs> let's look at this. From, at that point, they still thought they were on Earth. Yeah. Now, how did that dumb doctor know that that particular He wasn't plant, a doctor. Well, the, the supposed doctor, the serial killer that may have been a doctor. He wasn't a doctor. Uh, doctor was the only way he could explain walking around with scalpels. Oh, well, there's that. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, hey, I'm a mercenary. I'm a Tibetan deadly monk. I'm a Yakuza guy. I'm a serial killer. Shoot <laughs> that guy. <laughs> Shoot that guy. <laughs> so, the- you know, I'm a doctor. I don't belong, but I'm very friendly. Everyone don't mind me. Use me as bait. How Thank so- you, friendly Russian guy. Fuck off. How happy were you when the uh, fucking the miscreant, the prisoner finally bought it. I think that guy's a really good actor, actually. He, he's a fine actor. Well, the, character, the character well, that he I needed to die out. 20 minutes earlier. Yeah, but you know what? He went out with balls and kind of heroically uh, whereas <laughs> the guy everybody thought was sweet and innocent like, I'm going to kill the woman now because I want to live on the alien planet and be hunted. <laughs> loon! I'm a loon! ha <laughs> Today's plan is brought to you by Jackass Incorporated. Now, you've made mention of the acting of one person. How did you feel Adrian Brody actually pulled all this off? I, You know, Adrian Brody's a good actor. I thought the entire team was good actors. I did think Lawrence Fishburne was a little over the top. He was. He was a bit over. <laughs> he, did, he didn't really have to do Danny that Trejo much stuff. Danny Trejo did exactly what Danny Trejo does. <laughs> Menace and surprise in equal measure. They sacrifice the Mexican first. That's, and then they bring in the black guy, who they later sacrifice. No, but they had another one. <laughs> he died second. But that guy was a good actor. Walt Goggins is an amazing actor. If you ever watch him on The Shield, which one? Or, uh, the guy who played the serial, not the serial killer, the guy who played the uh, convicted. Oh, the felon. Yeah, he uh, was. A cop on the shield he was amazing in. He's on know. the show Justified on FX right now. Okay. Well, that's a start then. You know? I know. I thought it was very well cast. It was well done. I like, as much as, you know, normally I, I hate when things are just like, well, that didn't work, so we're just going to pretend it didn't happen. I thought starting after the first film and trying to rebuild the franchise made a certain level of sense. And there's no reason the two stories, two and this one, even though ignoring two is happening. There's no reason they couldn't happen either concurrently or very soon near each other. No, I think... Because they're in such incredibly different locales. But... You know, one's actually on Earth. You know, they could have learned from their mistakes and decided, you know what, take those guys off the fucking planet. Let's not visit the planet where something is happening where we can get killed with... They have a planet full of resources to come after us with. (laughs) Let's, however, stop for a second. Two... So you're arguing that two could have happened. Yeah. Except that none of them knew what they were. It's not preferable. None of them knew what they were, despite the fact that in two, they literally invaded L.A. on television. (laughs) No, the Israeli knew. 
Right. One chick had heard of him because it wasn't Israeli. She was like CIA because she is. No, she the Israeli sniper. She was IDF. Oh, okay. I didn't catch that. But uh, because they had debriefed the guy from the first movie. Yeah, Arnold Dutch. Schwarzenegger. That's why she knew because she'd actually been part of the debriefing. But in two, when the spaceships were literally attacking downtown LA in the middle of a hot summer, the entire oh. world <laughs> would have known. You're thinking the Predator comic. Uh, possibly, I'm, I'm confusing. Really? But if you think about two, the Predators were all over LA. They were, uh, uh, there were a few of them. Like, shit was fucked up. <laughs> The Predator was that's, no longer that, a secret after That's the two. go-to sentence for everything after a while. Shit it was, was fucked, fucked up. up. <laughs> Maria, Isn't that everybody's Alonso go-to sentence a after a while? Cop. <laughs> Bill Paxton with that stupid fucking hat getting killed in the subway train. I remember the goddamn movie, and it was not good. But, no, there definitely would have been aspects that would have carried over. Hey. All right, well, you know... That's enough about the Predators. Aside from um, <laughs> Adrian Brody doing his best to do a Christian Bale Batman. I didn't think he was that bad. I really didn't have a problem. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm totally screwing around on that one. He he uh, brought his vice. And he looked he, big. He, he did. He got he got a bit buffed, a little bit. Like, All right, Adrian Brody can kick my ass. I did not think that. And You'd never Kong. notice it, Mr. Piano. <laughs> no, uh, pianist. Piano is uh, <laughs> yeah, Harvey Keitel, and he can kick yeah, everybody's yeah, ass. Busy, 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 busy. Don't care. <laughs> what? Harvey Keitel could punch Jesus in the nuts and get away with it. That is a tough man. I don't know if he could get away with that. Maybe slap him in the cheek. I don't know. <laughs> so, other big news this week. Oh, yeah? I have begun my adventure in Cataclysm, where Deathwing, the aspect of the Death Dragon Flight. Oh, okay, World of Warcraft. Former... I'm slowly getting more and more concerned. <laughs> Former aspect of the Black Dragon flight has returned and broken the planet. He was hidden deep down in the bowels of Deep Home. Everything is a home. Deep Home? Really? Deep home. He's deep in the earth in Deep Home? Yes. Because Subterranean Home was already taken? That would have sounded even dumber. Come on. No, they got go Strath home, deep home. Everything's a home in there. It's like Berg. Is there a depot home? What? Depot home? No, there's not one of those. Home Depot? No. What did I just say? No. Oh, okay. There's none of those little weird twists you like to throw into things. I've already gotten my fucking Paladin up to 85, which is a frightening-ass... Tra- uh, <laughs> it's a frightening prospect because if their upgrade schedule goes the same way it has before, it's going to be at least a full year to two years before the next expansion comes out. So I'm just going to be sitting there making money and grinding and being bored. I've already got my priest up to 84. So, you know, by the end of next week, since I got to work again, <laughs> by the end of next week, She'll be 85. My death knight's going to be 82 soon, so that's not going to be long at all. Uh, but the game mechanics haven't changed seriously. They're nothing major that makes me want to say, Ew! Unlike when they did Galaxies and they ruined the entire goddamn game. Turned it from an RPG into a shooter with levels. <laughs> pissed me off to no end but uh, the talents are different you know you don't get spell you don't get a bunch of spells every level anymore you get a spell every other level and you get talents every level so you can improve your shit and then learn new shit every other level damn the shit what I said damn the shit who the fuck are you? I don't know. I make shit up sometimes when I don't Yeah, care. you make up a lot of shit a lot of I times. I don't play World of Warcraft. Like, you lost me at 80-something. Uh, you know what levels are. You've RPG'd before. Dude. And because I was so hyped for what? What's that look? I don't know. I was, I was waiting for the because I was so hyped for. <sighs> the 25th anniversary of Robotech. Oh, yeah? I went 
just to have them. Just so I can reread them and say, hey, I remember that shit. I got um, all of the books in the original Robotech role playing game off of Amazon used. Most of them for a penny a piece. That seems fair. <laughs> Paid more in shipping than I did for the books. Did you dig out your paper bags? Nah, they're all sitting in the garage. I don't care about those. One another, I'll, I'll wait another five years before I reread those. Don't be burning anything. And no, what's wrong with you? Nothing. Don't call the doctor. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about, or should we pop on the pile? Nothing about burning things. No, that's right. You're not going to burn anything. I won't burn anything. Put the Zippo back. <laughs> Rewatch nice. that this week. Oh, I need to watch. I've watched that in a long time. <laughs> Young Frankenstein is an amazing movie. <laughs> it is so much fun. I was watching the interview with um, Ringo Starr. Yeah. Um, and this was an older interview. And he was talking about a movie he made with Harry Nelson called Son of Dracula All that right. had not done very well in the theater. <laughs> and the interviewer, which is Tom Snyder, the guy who used to host the Tomorrow Show back in the day. Right. And young Frankenstein had just come out and done extreme, extremely well. It's like, you think it's because you were ahead of your time that you uh, your movie did not do as well as Young Frankenstein? And Ringo's goes like, yeah, I think we were ahead of our time. Also, it may not have been as good. <laughs> you gotta respect that kind of honesty. Like, yeah, I think, you know, uh, possibly the movie could have done better in a different climate. Also, that one was awesome. I don't think it was Citizen fucking Kane either, Tom. Thank you for asking. <laughs> well, let's move forward, shall All we? All right. That's uh, fucking homework. Yeah, yeah. First one we're going to talk about. Which is, we went uh, balls out on old Straczynski last week. <sighs> he hurt me. He hurt me terribly. Yep, by leaving you. Betrayed me. You know, I went and bought books. I continued a book I didn't want to continue anymore. And I restarted a book I didn't have interest in restarting just because he was around. When's the last time you bought Superman on a regular basis? On a regular basis was years ago. Years and years ago. If an interesting story popped up, I would get a few issues here and there, and then when it was done, I'd move on to something else. But 705, which leaves two whole issues left in Straczynski's run, he's walking through yet another city somewhere in fucking Illinois, right? Mount Prospect. <sighs> and what does he come across? Child abuse! Your standard everyday child abuse with a demon mixed in. What? In a dream. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about uh, the dream. I'm like, dude, I read that and <laughs> demon is not really. Uh... Uh, I can see where the kid idolizes Superman. Lots of kids idolize Superman. Sure. It's a pretty standard thing. It's not unusual. The big blue Boy Scout holds a presence and a charisma. That is just natural for young boys to gravitate to. Right. Um, Gravitas. <laughs> I appreciate the kid um, taking a stand. I've got no problem with that. Because in a lot of stories, you see a lot of kids just cowering in a corner or running off for help. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to have that tiny little change to have the kid stand up and take the shit for his mom. <sighs> But then, you know, Superman suddenly becomes a deus ex, and the book's over! Boom! That's the end of it! Nothing deeper. I mean, is this guy going to sue Superman? Probably not. He I mean, seems the kind of prick that just might try. Well, I mean, uh, the whole Superman, if the boy ever ne never calls, I'll know it was you. <laughs> you betrayed me, Fredo. <laughs> Here's my take. But that right there, I mean, that's pretty standard, too. He, he, he Call me every day. What happens in ten years when the kid, you know, starts getting laid? He's going to forget to call Superman. I'm just going to point out, first off, that really Superman can check his answering machine for a message from a six-year-old? Like, you know, how often are you off-planet, motherfucker? <laughs> my God, we're being invaded by Starro. That's a, that's Wait a minute, a, i got to get to my answering machine. That's a good bet, though. But, you know, hopefully he's got one of those voicemails that timestamp the things. Yeah, that's a good point. So, here's my take. First off, it's a very by-the-book stereotypical story. I don't think it's terribly done or anything. But, 
superhero, like, yes, he's dealing with smaller issues. Yes, there's that whole sequence of is he doing the right thing and people are starting to get scared. It's also the second issue in a row where he beats up a redneck with facial hair. <laughs> woo <Woo-hoo. laughs> Honestly, bring back fucking Terra Man. All right, before you start going. Nope, yeah. no, give me the rednecks with the facial no, hair. I don't need this. Terra Man. Like, I don't need Superman to be beating up freaking people that I drink with on a regular basis. <laughs> because, dude, first off. You drink with child abusers? Who knows? You pissy little fuck. How I'm could you say, do that? I'm making a point here. <laughs> Based on what we've seen, you know who the current Superman villain is? You. Us. <laughs> I haven't done anything Superman worthy. I haven't done anything regular. Old All I'm worthy. saying is, if he were going to, based on who he's beating up in the li- if you put us in a lineup, we have a pretty good chance of getting punched in the face. <laughs> Not awesome. Not me. As long as I shave, I'm all right. <laughs> <Fuck> off. <laughs> well, he's got a baseball cap, flannel, and a beard. <laughs> there are a lot of assumptions in his run right now. All right, but secondly. <laughs> You know what I was looking for? This is fucked up, but from a story standpoint, not from the moral happy ending. Obviously, I don't want to see anyone hurt a child in life or in anything. Right. But at one point, Superman's walking by the building and doesn't know that there's a kid about to get the shit kicked out of him. Well, he can't just randomly x-ray houses. But my point is, how much better a story is it that in his walk... You see him missing the bigger picture. Oh yeah, yeah. And this they don't because of course you can't have Superman. You can't have a child abuse story where the kid continues to get abused. No, and that's you, you certainly stop. can't have Superman. I mean, you know, maybe a Batman story where he finds it and the kid's already dead and he beats the piss out of somebody because that's very Batman esque. That would be standard. Yes. <laughs> now it's about revenge. <laughs> it's never been about revenge, Damien. It's about put just scroll them down. <laughs> You see that little bit of Robin beating the ever loving piss out of you know, it's very clear. But with Superman you can't have this. But how much better I was it in that moment? That. I think we should be the next voiceover characters for <laughs> Dude, you just lost it even as you were saying it. Like, <laughs> we should be the next voiceover characters. Can't break like that. If you want to be Batman, you cannot break like that. You get that. a second take. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but um They're not doing that live. <laughs> that moment where Superman is walking through town and not stopping exactly what he's doing because you can't there's 40 who knows how many freaking houses he's walked by where something criminal is going on yeah you know what they probably don't all have weird aliens hanging out on earth <laughs> hiding out but the whole point of this is that he's got interfering with it. and interfering for me is a right word because he's trying to re-establish himself in a sense with the common man and he's going to miss more than he helps that's the whole point of what he's doing yes is to try and show that in a sense but if he just walked by this little kid and that's the whole storyline, how fucking creepy an issue is that? That would be a very creepy how issue. How better an issue is that? That actually would probably be better. But then suddenly, like, I'm sitting there like, oh my god. But then everybody's got to feel like shit and then you get a bunch of backlash. And for... then it's a Straczynski book. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but suddenly he spins around and is freaking super hearing and his super eyes and his super knowledge of child abuse... <laughs> Allow- super knowledge of child and there's your title <laughs> super knowledge of child it allows him to suddenly spin and beat the crap out of some dude because he realizes what's going on fine and the dude the, first off the whole thing with the kid falling down the stairs and smacking all the way down <laughs> Jesus fucking curb stomping was, American history X ugh, 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 every time I think about that fucking flick I just ugh. I feel my teeth cracking. The, the top three, uh, uh, one of the top three most fucked up things I've seen in terms of uh, making me wince. <sighs> the other two are uh, the bones breaking on the stairs in Unbreakable. Yep. And fingernail popping off in Stir of Echoes. <sighs> that was a moment, because you're like, this movie isn't doing. Did that just fucking happen? <laughs> <laughs> Never seen that before. All right, but so. Uh. It's such a by-the-book, okay, child abuse is bad. No one's going to argue that. Superman should stop it. No one's going to argue that. This is what he's accomplishing by walking through town. But if he had missed it, it just changes the tone so greatly. Oh, yeah. But then again, it feels like I'm coming out like, that kid should have gotten the shit kicked out of him for (laughs) a life. That's not it. We don't condone that here on The Mean Geek. But. Unless you deserve it. It would. Hey. There's some smart-ass children out there. 
Daddy drinks because you cry. <laughs> <laughs> and the edge of civility goes further, Lighter, further, further. Get off of your cloud. Are you ready for the next book? What's the next book? The next book is Ultimate Thor 1 and 2. Hickman and Pacheco. I specifically chose these because they were discounted. I hadn't read them. I wanted a Thor story. I like Hickman. I like Pacheco. Uh, Still done with the Ultimates. Uh, if there's any more to these somewhere, there's got to be somewhere. But I might get another two of this particular storyline and then call it even. You want to finish Ultimates. out the storyline because yeah. that's what you like to do. Nazis invading Asgard. Well, you know what? There's some clever concepts in here. The whole... Um, no, I like that. No, but you know what? It's just the same damn thing. They're vaguely changing stuff. It's not overly impressive. The whole, is Thor Thor? Uh, or is he, you know... An insane person. Right. And then that was all a plan of Lokis, which they're not dealing with because they're dealing with a Loki Nazi story. Like, well, they've taken this from the Ultimates, kind of moved it forward, kind of thrown certain aspects away. It's not overly working for me. I did like um, the younger Loki hanging out with Thor and hanging out with Balder because they're kind of addressing that in Thor right now. Right. But they're doing that in a better way. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is Making much Volstagg better. look vaguely impressive was the best thing that happened in these two issues. <laughs> and the big reveal... Come on, Volstagg's impressive. No, in a good way, not in a holy fat kind of way. <laughs> but, uh, the big reveal of Loki, in fact, providing the Nazis with everything and they being, need to get into Asgard. Being in a Nazi uniform. Well, he was Baron Zemo. He was, in fact, posing as Baron Zemo. Well, no, it's the ultimate. Oh, that's right. He could have been. That's yes, the whole point. Yes, it's that he was right. Baron Zemo. You're which right, is you're ridiculous. Right, right. It's, uh... That's not that bad. And they kill Heimdall. It's just... Killing Heimdall kind of irritated me. Well, but it's the ultimates. I don't care what happens. <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's not real to me. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimates are not real to me. <laughs> well, you know what? You do something in a comic, and I'm like, holy shit, this is going to have repercussions. It usually doesn't. They're just like, no, that didn't actually happen. He was just chewing on that arrow. He didn't eat it. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is that with the Ultimates, at this point, it's just, we're just going to fuck with things randomly. Pretty much. They come up with a neat... It's an Elseworlds. And on they, a large... Poorly executed scale, but you know what? Well, so we're elsewhere. Most of the elsewhere. How many great elsewhere stories are there really? I mean, sure, the Red blue, Rain. the gray, and the bat was awesome and all. The blue and the gray and the bat was not any damn good. <laughs> I hate to say that any Batman story was no fucking good, but the blue, the gray, and the bat did not need to be published, and that's but the end of that. The the fact of the matter is, is that they're just making stuff up because there's no consequences and no history to have to deal with. Right. And what started off intriguing has become almost lazy, for lack of a better term. No, no, that's that's a very good way to put it. So I'm not sure that I'm dying to read a ton more Ultimates. I liked uh, my favorite by far was Ultimate Fantastic Four, which had a much slower pace. Right. Did some really creative stuff. I liked uh, Ultimate Spider-Man a lot. I read a couple of the Ultimates, and uh, you know, not really feeling it too much anymore. And this is why, although. Before I feel like I've knocked it to the ground, miles ahead of Ultimate Armor Wars. Oh, yeah. I was not happy with Ultimate Ar Armor Wars at all. Didn't need it. Not going to read another one. Of they put up, a, put up an Armor Wars 2 from the Ultimate line. I'm going to burn it. Unless the living laser's in it. Cause, uh, you know. No, yeah. It's going to go then, too. Doubly so. <laughs> Generation Lost. 1314. You still hate this. I hate this book. However, I'm now a much bigger fan of this book for the simple reason that they killed Magog. I, I don't mind Magog dying. I, was, I don't I mind was that remarkably at all. okay with it. But now it's a dark book. Like the whole light humor thing has died. Gone. In, what, gone. you got 14 and 15 there, or 13 and 14? 13 and 14. So in 13, you have the death of Magog, you have Captain Adam getting the shit kicked out of him, yep. moving into space, which he's already done. And then in 14, you've got the, the future world's Justice worst League. time travel story. <sighs> hey, let's, for a second, 
just randomly take two characters, change them slightly, and make them the future version. Don't need it. John John's looking at the original Martian with a goatee, the creeper with a robotic arm. The creeper, you know, there was Some no need. Some chick Shazam with swords. No, she looked kind of good. <laughs> and I don't mean that. I, the costume I dig is what yeah. I meant. The motif she's working from looks pretty good. Shazamma! No. When you put an A at it, it makes it more feminine. I am going to smack you one day. <laughs> Dude, but, the, the what those with Wolverina don't count, man. It's, what are you it, talking you about? You put an A at the end, it becomes more... I mean, there are exceptions. Captain America, you add an A, it becomes Captain America. Um, Spider-Man, you put an A at the end, you get Spider-Man. I mean, you know, it doesn't always work, but in general... spider man Creepy. That's my new Warcraft character. Namorita. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's... Sure, there's an ITA, but the A is the key factor. What do you want from me? People have been reading Black too much Falconer. Spanish. No, that's, that's never going to work. Chicky? Chicky. Chicky boo boo. It probably would be chicky anyway, yeah. since, you know, falcon, bird, chicken. Wow, girl. you've actually taken my horrible point and made it worse. Good for you. I live for moments like that. Yeah, there you go. But no, I don't like this book. I don't think it's fun. I don't care. And. They managed to take Booster Gold and make him eat less pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've tried a couple of issues of Booster's own book. I wasn't impressed by you it. You haven't brought it over here, so I have not. <laughs> no, nah, that was before we even started podcasting. So, the Black Canary is, in fact, Black Canary. Uh,. A blue scarab, which is yet another... It's the son of the... Or the offspring, I, mean, I believe they put it. Not descendant. What the hell does that mean, descendant? I don't know. Maybe it's of the scarab and not of the boy. Who knows? Red Hood, Thomas Grayson, who do, do, uh, Dick's son? Dick's yeah, grandson? Or Isn't that the name of the weird dude in the middle of the Batman stories right now? Thomas Grayson? Yeah, the one Joker just uh, put Joker Venom on. No. What was it? His, his uh, no. It's I don't oh, remember no, his Thomas name. Thomas Wayne. And not in the universe of yeah. Bringing together. And I didn't need to see the Omax again. And Kara, don't forget Kara. Well, uh, you've got Max Lord. You have to have Omax these days. Yeah. Yes. But the other aspect is now we know the big reveal is that he's out to kill Diana. But why her in particular? Well, first off, she killed him, which is only fair. Well, okay. Besides that. Well, there's no... How do you besides that? How do you take that off the table? <laughs> you could. How? <laughs> really? I mean... You killed me. I have to kill a superhero. You killed me. I'm going to fucking kill you. That's the only logical... Ch- I mean, how else do you pick? Well, I think Black Adam would be more difficult. Yeah, come on. You broke my fucking neck with a rope. I want you to die horribly. <laughs> Oh, I right? live. It's not like Mr. Mind where it's sitting there like, I will kill Shazam because he wears a big fucking lightning bolt on his... No, it's very <laughs> logical. It's a good move, really, because if Diana finds Mac Lord again and suddenly remembers him, what's she going to do? Kill him again. And would that suck if you were Maxwell Lord? Yes, it would. So what are you going to do? <laughs> kill Wonder Woman. See? If, you, know, you can't take that out of All right, you, ha- you have a long string of... Imperturbable logic there. <laughs> I'm very proud of that logic. I know. I'm not known for logic. I'm just saying. All right, what do we got next? We're done with that book. Are we, we literally um, done with that book, or are you? Fin- uh, Why? What is it about this book that keeps you coming back to it? Because you're not enjoying it. Is it tormenting me? Because that's not the first time you've done that. No. Is that uh, a factor? No. <laughs> it might be. No, it's not. Uh, God damn it, I want to know how it ends. All right, fair enough. That, hey, there are worse reasons. And it's, it's, it's only a six-month thing. So, 26, we're halfway through. Wait, halfway? There's 12 more of these motherfuckers? Yeah. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Actually, more. There's It's 26 weekly. So, we're, you know, this week was 15. So, 11 more. Yeah. So, you know, three months. You got to deal with it for three more months. Rapture. (laughs) Whereas, now that I have my sixth issue of Green Arrow, 
I'm not bothering with these. This thing jumps around so goddamn much. They want to talk about the forest. They want to talk about the takeover of Queen Industries. They want to talk about Galahad. They want to talk about the Queen taking over the industry and still believing that Ali wants the company back and everything. His dad's ex-lover who's taken over the company. Which he couldn't give a fuck about anymore, yet she still thinks he's ready to come back. He... Drove it into the ground. I thought it was dead. I don't recall it being something. You know, she brought it back. She she had some. How'd stake. she get it? She uh, she must have had some stake in it at some point. And and none of this makes a lick of sense. All she needed was a controlling vote on the board. It does. She didn't need to own yeah. all of it. I'm pretty sure it was bought out, pit and parcel back in the day. Probably. This is not a good book. I'm sorry. No. And the worst part is, is that I am an adu- unadulterated <laughs> Green Arrow fan. You are not. No, and I slowly made you with the last couple storylines and buying an occasional graphic. It was growing on you. It was, Until and then this, and you're like, dude, fuck you for making me look at this. <laughs> <laughs> and Galahad, what the? Fuck? Yeah, where did he come out of nowhere? I'm a knight who just, hangs out in the giant forest of magic trees. Just one one issue. He was just there. They haven't talked about how he got there, right. why he's there. <sighs> Insanity. No, rough, rough book. No more green fucking arrow. I'm a little heartbroken. A little bit. I, I was ready for. You a, were enjoying. Like, green ready, Arrow, I was ready Black for Canary. A solid ongoing. You went out and bought Green Arrow, Black Canary issues on your own after I yeah, slowly got you I into did. it, and I and, liked them. <sighs> but what you didn't dig again? Yeah. Uh, it, it's just a big fat pile of fuck all today. Well, what a shock. You didn't dig Warriors 3. Who would? Just by willing them. Did you like it? Uh, it, was, it was okay. With the little uh, scientists I fighting ogres? And... I would have borrowed it at one point if I had known what it was going to be like instead of outright buying it. But, you know, Volstag at an all-you-can-eat diner... You, somebody was going to write that scene eventually. <laughs> it could have been a is whole fuckload funnier, though. Is it absolutely terrible? No. No, of course not. You see Fandral thrown out a window for banging somebody's wife. You see Hogan fitting, getting in a totally bar fight. Fitting, fitting to all characters so far. So Fenris the wolf escapes, and the Warriors 3 are hunting him. And yep. then there's a lot of poetry and weird scientists who are hunting Fenris so they can free him. And the Warriors 3, who all have... Different reasons for hating, like, <laughs> really? Uh, it was just an experiment. I hadn't actually planned on getting this. I didn't hear anything about getting this. And now they're at the mercy of trolls at the end of the issue. And we're promised scientific love among the pits of hell with Fandral and some chick in armor. Not what I'm looking forward to. And yet, you know what? I mean, because it's Willingham, isn't there kind of a temptation to see where it goes? There is. But... Will you? Iffy. In but these, you might. If it's a slow week when that one comes out... Or if it's a slow week the next week when that one's still fucking there... Yes. So odds are I'm going to see issue two of this. It's an okay bet. It's not an assured okay. bet. Fair enough. But it was not strong and it was not phenomenal. I can't say any better than that. Two incredibly huge issues of Amazing Spider-Man. One that finishes off, for the most part, the... Harry Osborn. The whole Harry Osborn thing. Starts a whole lot of stuff from scratch at a Halloween party. In... Well, getting ready for a Halloween party. You know, with a Paris Hilton analog... Again. This was a weird issue. You know, it's killing off a bunch of storylines and introducing some new ones. I get the tiny little thing. Um, I just... I did have fun seeing the Spider-Mobile again and fucking Flash Thompson in a Spider-Mobile wheelchair was amusing to me. Uh, The whole uh, Paris Hilton chick storyline explaining some character that they'd never dealt with 
I didn't care about. Um, the Overdrive character who can turn into any car. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Absolutely atrocious. That, that. There was uh, who thought him up? But you know <sighs> the finally Peter Parker's now finally dating the dorky cop chick that I don't give a shit about. Carly the CSI chick. Really? <laughs> You can't have good Spider-Man when he's dating somebody. The highlight of this issue for me was that Peter Parker came to a party, the all-hero party, dressed as J. Jonah Jameson, by taping a hairbrush to his head to <laughs> simulate the hair. <laughs> That's hysterical. Take that out and I don't care. And this is my major issue with Spider-Man is right now that I just don't care. Like, you had the gauntlet, which I thought started strongly, went nowhere, except for the phenomenal lizard issues. Yes. Shed then, was great. Then you had uh, the Craven the Hunter storyline, which I thought was going to be awesome and was just turned out all right. And then not much. The whole uh, Doc Ock and Goblinita and Harry's baby. <laughs> oh, Harry's baby dressed as Doctor Octopus was kind of adorable. That was funny. But I uh, enjoyed that. And Harry Osborn beating the shit out of that dude. <laughs> Where are we going? Is, is he crazy again? I mean, what's the point of this? Well, no, I mean... He he makes a point of saying he's not crazy, which kind of makes it crazy. <sighs> he had to show that he was independent of his father. How is he going to do that? By having someone who's not... Dude, if you wanted to prove that you were different than Norman Osborn, psychotically not beating someone <laughs> would be... <laughs> Marginally better than psychotically beating someone. That would tend to suggest that you were right on par with being Norman fucking Osborn. <laughs> and the character piece with Flash? Which one? The character piece, the, the eight pages or so, where Flash just tells him how wonderful he is yeah, and how much he idolized him. You know. God, what? I just don't care. I, you know, I miss the days when he bullied him. Like that made sense <laughs> to me. Well, then you should go read fucking Ultimate Spider-Man again. No, we tried that. Remember? Well, that's where that's happening. You got to have some kind of change eventually. You take Mary Jane and Harry Osborn out of the book, but you leave me Flash Thompson. Thanks. Oh, and he's dating Betty Brant. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Okay. I'm Are gonna you keep done? that up. No, you're not. But let's be honest. Like, is there anything in this book you're like, it's a damn must mic. read? Not this issue, no. <laughs> and then we follow that up with the introduction of introduction. <laughs> introduction. <laughs> really? Okay. Oh. <laughs> that is enough. <laughs> you are not doing that anymore. I'm going to turn off the mic. I'm going to terminate this episode. And we're gonna call it episode even. with extreme prejudice. Really, shut the fuck. Up. <laughs> what the hell, dude? So we follow that up with the introduction of the uh, new. You artist. said it wrong again. I know, inten- <laughs> intentionally that time. Um, sure it was. Humberto Ramos, who is a decent Spider-Man artist. Awesome. Well, he works really choice. well for. I dude. mean, he was a great artist in general. You big fan of Impulse when he was on. What? A really good choice for Spider-Man. <laughs> I don't understand what the big time portion of it is, though. Well, because I mean, he's going, he's moving into the big time. Now he's got a big time scientist job, which he'll fuck up. All right, well, there's that. I don't and know if that's big time. Again, they were resolving things. He's no longer living with a girl who hates him. He's been thrown out. Well, that's a good start because I was getting irritated by that. Well, he's the worst roommate ever, apparently, as we find out by everyone who's ever lived with him. None of them want to ever see him again. Well, you know, he's irresponsible. From their perspective, he's completely irresponsible. He do- he's never has any fucking dough. From his perspective, he's irresponsible and never has any dough. Like, if I were Spider-Man, I would hate myself, too. Like, this is my double edge with Spider-Man. On one level, I want to love him and be like, dude, you're the geek who kicks ass and dates hot chicks. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the other hand, I'm like, dude, you're the self-loathing geek who's a loser who can't balance two things in his life without fucking one up. <laughs> and that's exactly what Spider-Man has been for 45 years. The dichotomy <laughs> is painful. <laughs> but really what it comes down to is be Spider-Man, have a reasonable job, beat some shit up, and bang Mary Jane. That's all I really want from you. And you're not doing any of those things. 
<laughs> However, unless this clock on this bomb is synchronized with like the fucking atomic clock in Boulder, there's no reason it shouldn't have gone off. Oh, that was horrifyingly bad. The oh, wait a minute. Uh, like literally Dr. Octopus includes in his plan daylight savings time in a bomb so it won't go off. Not fucking likely. The absolutely sti- and bo- I reread and that- these pages like four times trying to figure out did they explain how that was possible? Is it synchronized? Somewhere? I really enjoyed how Reed Richards and Tony Stark are like, "Oh wait, what?" I didn't think about no. that because, and his whole theory, like you didn't think it's about stupid. it because it never fucking work. <laughs> it's a timer. It's not <laughs> horrifyingly bad. <laughs> and then we have him reteaming up with Felicia Hardy because she wants some Avengers rub on her for no apparently good reason, <sighs> but just so he can feel awkward again because now he's dating. <laughs> Jesus H Christ! <laughs> and kids, don't blaspheme. Wow, <laughs> you you're just so not in line with this shit. And I, I, of the two of us, I'm the bigger Spider-Man. Fan. I just want something that I can follow, I guess. And they're so careening this way and that. They're so pissing on the ashes. Pissing on the ashes. Be honest for a second. It's another bag I got to replace. That's the same one. You're, you're back to it. Oh yeah. <laughs> When you think about relationships in comics. Yeah. Now, obviously, back in the 40s, every single person had the female love interest, and they all couldn't stand the test of time. Well, sure. I get that. Right. Keep going. But now we're in the aughts. We're almost out of the aughts. We're in the 11s. 11s. <laughs> Well, they Keep had the, going. No, think about it. They had the 20s already, right? Which means before that, they had the 10s. Yeah. No one talks about the 10s, but they were there. So now we're going into the 10s again, but we've already had them, so these are the 11s. I know you hate it, but you can't debate it. There's only two of those. And realistically speaking, they're the teens. Because what's 12 but a fucked up way of saying Dude, you hate teenagers. Teen. You really want to live in the teens for 10 years? It's two teen. Two teen? <laughs> wow, you pulled out a fucking <laughs> Jawa reference. And I'm damn proud of it. Um, Holy crud, dude. I'm sorry, but now I've lost my train of thought because of stupid Jawas. What were we talking about? There's a new Hobgoblin. Okay, relationships. Okay, fuck. Hobgoblin. What are the definitive we don't relationships need to worry about at Hobgoblin. this point? <laughs> There's only still Sue, Sue and Reed. No, no, I mean, you have Sue and Reed. You've got. Superman and Lois Lane, like... Oh, you meant overall. Overall, yes. yeah. Yeah, so far, Lois. Um, what... And really, don't you think of Spider-Man and Mary... Like, isn't that the whole point of Spider-Man? I would that much... That he got the girl next door, that was the big... Thing. So when you take that out of the equation, you're messing with a lot there. Yeah, I would much prefer having Mary Jane being... You're messing with... John Romita, you just hit the jackpot, Tiger. Yeah, like you're not just getting rid of uh, elongated man and Sue Diddy here. You're you're messing with which I don't know. You, I don't know that you'd ever have called definitive because I mean it wasn't until Identity Crisis that I ever realized just how far Ralph was into her. What? I, I didn't go read back that. and read Justice Leagues. Which Justice Leagues? All of them. Dude, Sue I ain't reading them in the '60s, my boy. No, no, no. The, <laughs> the Giffen era and Demas era, Sue Dibney and Ralph are all over that, and they're a great couple. I, Any side story, all the Starman stuff he was in. I know no, that you she hate was Starman around, for the most she part. She was always but, around, and they were always lovey-dovey. But I never got the impression out of those that I got out of Identity Crisis. But that's what I'm saying. You're like those are the res- you take Green Lantern. That's a love that didn't last the test of time, whatever. No. You take most of it, it doesn't. That's fine. Mary Jane and Spider-Man are so core at this point that it doesn't feel right. No. And to the other terms, all right, there's a new Hog Goblin, they killed the old Hog Goblin. And this would the mean more to me if it wasn't they... the fourth fucking Hog Goblin. <laughs> 
Ned Leeds, Jason Masondale. <laughs> Whoever the fuck the last one was that turned into that Demo Goblin. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, honestly, Demo Goblin, ew. That mask has a fucking time bomb on it <laughs> that does go off. <laughs> And now it's Ben Urich's nephew, the moron with the hypnotic laugh? Really? Yeah, I... You know, just leave the damn character alone. Straighten him out. Leave him at one point. Yeah, so it's the fourth. The fourth hobgoblin. Fourth. Yeah, what do we need four hobgoblins We don't for? really need one. I mean, we had the green go- hobgoblin. Like, dude, uh, I like your stuff, but I prefer the color orange. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, you know, I did think that the hobgoblin uniform was a little more menacing than the well, green goblin. Well, that's because, you know, the green goblin had been around since the 60s. He had the giant smiley face on him. And he had purple. You just don't like purple. I can't find purple menacing. All right, I can see that. Well, a Grimace muted... scares the shit out of you. Barney scares even more out of you. Well, yeah. You know what that kid thing has done? To ki- Never mind. Moving on. Next page. So, <laughs> the fact of the matter... Is that I thought it was kind of cool. I like the art again. I'm enjoying where it's going. It's just not the Spider Man that I personally want. But I can't knock the book either. It's a big step forward. It's a huge step forward. And I'm certainly more intrigued by these two issues than I was by the end of the last run. Right. The end of the last run kind of petered out and I didn't give a shit. I really just want Chris Backlow <laughs> to draw the lid. That's all I really want for Spider Man until he starts banging Mary Jane again. My, uh, to draw the who? The lizard. <laughs> I like Chris Backlow's lizard, and I want Peter Parker to date Mary Jane. I do like that he's actually got a job. <laughs> and they set it up where it's a job where he doesn't have to be there. He can go off and swing on webs. As long as he gets results, which he always does. Except he won't, because he's already drawing a blank because he's Peter Parker. Well, you know, if he was smart, he would patent the fucking web fluid. You know, if he was smart, he would patent a web fluid. He would change it just a little bit. You know, it's a long chain polymer already. It, it, there's a thousand. I think you just like saying polymer. Long chain polymer. You, well, you know, it's a great phrase. All right, what do we got next? Long in the chain. Long chain polymer. It's a rock band. No, it's not. <laughs> it will be. <laughs> Thor six seventeen, fraction and ferry. Thor finds Loki a French con artist teenager and reveals to him his true nature and they go running off for adventure and But Loki stays a teenager. Yeah. Still very intrigued with what Fractions do. This issue was um, didn't do a ton for me. It's got weird dwarfs going out to be killed because they've been waiting for their death for years. you still got that strange scientist getting kicked in the balls which is yeah. hysterical. Um, I want to see where the storyline goes. It's not my favorite Fraction Thor issue by far. Goddamn goblins. These guys look a lot like the Warcraft goblins. They're dwarves. Those are not dwarves. The green guys are dwarves. Those are fucking goblins. It says it. They're dwarves. It doesn't say they're dwarves. How can they be dwarves? Let's see. Speak while I find out whether these are dwarves or not. Really, you're just going to give me free reign to talk about. All right, well, I know you've been getting um, a little sadder looking lately. I don't know, I'm making shit up. <laughs> That's the most fucked up dwarf I've ever seen. These are goblins, and they identify themselves as dwarves. Aha! That's Victory! Not, that's Mine. not correct. That's wrong. That's irritatingly bad. I Check Jedi fatality. What? This is not Mortal Kombat. That's always Mortal Kombat, my heart. Also, I was incredibly bad at that game. Yeah, the the one game that you've ever been bad at. That's not true. Um, Yeah. I'm thinking there was uh, something else I absolutely sucked at. Yeah. Not Goldeneye, obviously. Oh, wait, uh, Killer Instinct. (laughs) Killer Instinct. Shit kick out of me. (laughs) And sadly, Rampage, as much as I loved it. Everybody ate more people than I did. I was too kindly. I let too many people go. I Uh, I always wanted to punch helicopters. You didn't really get a good record of eating people till your late 20s, so. (laughs) Oh! 
And Franco goes, goes in, in where the others, others have been. been. Yeah, so, Fraction, right now, is one of my top guys. Right. And if he can sustain Thor for just a little bit longer and then ramp it right up, you know, I would be happy with the Thor book. Well, it's not a bad book, and I've enjoyed a lot of it. This was not my favorite issue, but I'm certainly not in any no. way negative. And um, I think you're just going all Thor-tastic, though. I mean, you've got Warriors <laughs> 3, you've got Ultimate Thor. Well, this time around... You have now Thor Jr. No, they don't. <laughs> Don't Captain promise people. Thor and Stop, the people are going to be running out crew. to Amazon and looking for Thor Jr. and they're not going to find it. All uh, three people that we don't personally know who listen to this podcast are going to be going Thor Jr. I missed that one. And start looking it up. Don't say things like that. Captain Thor and the Amazing Asgard crew. No such thing as that either. Don't do that. <laughs> no one's going to look for that one though. I'm sorry, but you know somebody might. I'm telling you. You know, I need to find a Captain Carrot. You know, I Captain slowly... Carrot. Well, they they I don't can't have... be that difficult to find. Yeah. Actually, it really could. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think how long it took me to find Kid the... Christian Corporate and oh. how pissed you were when I finally did. Yeah, I was mad. Don't do <laughs> things like that. But I might read Captain Carrot. <laughs> you'll might you'll Earth read Veggie. Cat... <laughs> you'll read freaking uh, Kickers Incorporated. No, I won't either. I will not. I'll reread Justice. I'll reread Starbrand. I'm Even Cy Force and uh, DP7. DP7. But I will not ever go back to Spitfire and the Troubleshooters. <laughs> <laughs> I will not go back to Kickers Incorporated. I will not go back to Cy Mask. Hey, uh, Cy Mask and Spitfire and the Troubleshooters are miles above oh. Kickers Incorporated. Yeah, but they're still down in the depths compared to Starbrand. To paraphrase Allison Chains, down in a hole. <laughs> is that really a paraphrase? Or is no, that... it's an exact quote, but it was more fun in my way. <laughs> All right, I, you know, I believe they meant different things than I did. I don't think they were referring to uh, Kickers Incorporated when they wrote the song. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, kids, we're going to... It's the a... end of the episode. We're going to call a moratorium on episode 60. Don't forget that we got a call. You really in enjoy show. saying moratorium. I, I do. It's a good. You know what's a good. You know it's a very similar word. It's moratory. Moratory. Yes. Net Povich. No, that's Mari. Uh, we gonna find out, Mari. No, moratory was we'll get into later. But why? <laughs> We're ending the episode. Just later. Just don't worry about it. Right. Um, have a great night. Hey, hold up. Forgive us for episode 59. (laughs) It was a terrible issue. We didn't know what the fuck we were doing. This will be posted much closer to 59 than 59 was to 58. uh, Yes, just so you know. If if you want, please rant about it. Call us. Yes, call Wednesday. So what do I have to do on Wednesday? This is the first I heard about it. Pick up the phone. I have to call someone? You're not required to. You don't have to if you don't want to. I'm the, I'm You're going to do episodes without me again? That never works out well. Sure it does. It does fine. Download-wise, it's roughly equal. You know what? Call Wednesday and demand the <laughs> reverend on all episodes. <laughs> God damn it. They're never going to know. It's a day and a half away. It's too late. Uh, but you can leave us a voicemail. Yeah, you advertised <laughs> it, and then you're like, it's a day and a half away. They'll never know. No one's going to call you, jackass. I, you know, there are things I do specifically to screw with you. Yes, everything. No, not everything. everything. Kids, have a good night. Bless you, fuckers. Bye bye. The Mean Geek is recorded live at the Reverend Mad Duck's apartment whenever the hell we can get to it. You can find us on iTunes, Podcast Alley, Facebook, Comic Space, our own site, www.themeangeek.com. Subscribe to us through RSS, and most importantly, Find us as a proud member on the Punk Comics Podcast Network. Contact us directly through email at themeanergeek at gmail.com. <laughs>